Well, thank you very much, Ron. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here with you and with everybody uh, online around uh, the country and, and the world, wherever you might be. Um, as Ron mentioned, my, uh, my name is Bill Lundgren. I am the uh, Director of Product Management for Cloud uh, Architecture, Security, and Compliance at Extreme. Uh, with that, I also hold the title of Distinguished Engineer. Uh, so my area of responsibility is for our flagship product known as Extreme Cloud IQ. What I'm going to do is take you through a little walk through what that looks like in today's space and what cloud network management uh, is ideally tailored for in enterprise. And we're also going to talk about the security aspects of the cloud and, and considerations that you need to look at when you start moving network management to cloud uh, environments. So let's take a look here. If I can get my computer to respond. There we go. Um, IT today is filled with a lot of challenges, right? We, we were you know, happily moving along in 2019 with our traditional security uh, uh, models, our traditional networking models. Everyone was going into a building, and if you were working remotely, it was primarily a negotiated thing, or certain staff might, might work remotely, but it wasn't this ubiquitous scenario where, like today, we are here with most of us working remotely, perhaps. Uh, the entire environment of modern IT has changed, and we all kind of, kind of realize that. The one thing, though, that didn't change was the user experience and the expectations of the user. Just because someone's not sitting in your office building, just because they don't have a desk now and a place to go, didn't mean that they were accepting of the fact that they needed to do extra hoops to get to something or that something wasn't as fast as they were used to. They still wanted to be able to work as if they were in the office without any idea that they were even missing anything by being there. And furthermore, you know, we've all been impacted, especially, you know, in Silicon Valley area uh, and around the world, we've all seen it in the service industry and even in IT is the, is the limited hiring capability, right? We've, we've gotten to the point where people either aren't working or people have moved on to different career paths. And it's very difficult to hire quality talent at prices that we can all afford, especially with the way the economy is today. And so we're doing more uh, work with less, uh, you know, 2019 timeframe, we had maybe, uh, you know, let's say you had 50 sites to your uh, organization and five or 600 users. Well, that now overnight with COVID and all the challenges of modern the modern world, those 50 sites have now went to 600 sites because all of those employees are now working from home. And you're now having to manage double, triple, quadruple, even 10 times the amount of, of uh, infrastructure and it's all done with the same amount of people or even sometimes less. So what we've done here at Extreme is, is a concept of this idea of infinite enterprise, where no longer can we think of an enterprise as a campus environment. We can't think of it as just, you know, my environment, I've got some offices in Boston and in LA. I might have offices now in countries that I never thought possible because I have employees there, or in areas of the country that I never thought possible because I have someone there. So this idea that your enterprise is infinitely distributed. Every time you hire someone, you're effectively onboarding another new network site. So that means that this environment has to move at scale. It has to be able to grow as the business grows, as your success uh, blossoms with whatever product you happen to do, whether you make widgets or you're an accountant, it needs to be able to grow with you without any question that you are able to handle that capacity. And it has to be consumer centric. It has to deliver the services to a user that they are expecting and be able to do it without them questioning the fact that they're even working remotely. My telephone still has to work. My chat has to work. All my business applications have to work. And I don't care whether I'm at my office on Monday and then go home for the rest of the week. I should have that same ubiquitous experience. And so this is where cloud and this concept of infinite enterprise all combine together into this idea that I want one network. I don't want to, as an IT administrator, have to have a portal to manage this and a portal to manage that and this infinite expansion, if you will, of management portals. I want one place to see all of this stuff, no matter how many sites I have. And I want to tie it all together with a common framework. And that's where we have the one extreme uh, link to all of this. So if we look through 
what our cloud is and what Extreme Cloud IQ allows us to do is it gives us this inf the management infrastructure, the element management, the insight of AI ops, being able to have and collect all of this data throughout my network, through all of these randomized places where it might be, and then look at what might be happening for those users and to give them that consumer experience to be able to say, you know, hey, Bob, I noticed that you're having trouble at home with your wireless. Uh, have you thought about changing this, this, and this? Well, that and being able to do that proactively is a huge benefit to you when the network tells you what you need to do. And universal in that it should work across any of the platforms that you've deployed and unified, meaning that it can work across platforms that even aren't owned by extreme networks to be able to bring you insight into Cradlepoint and Cisco and Juniper and whoever else you might be using on your network. Because we all know we generally don't get in bed with the same exact manufacturer, especially now with supply chain issues. You want to be able to have some diversity in your network to get you through certain some you know the modern supply chain challenges. So by unifying that though into one common framework, we can now bring in that intelligence to you in one dashboard. And then secure by design is just that. You're bringing network data, uh, statistics about your network, not necessarily the raw A to B communication, but you're certainly bringing in information like usernames, experience data, IP addresses, elements of information that depending on where in the world you are, are classified as PII or personally identifiable information, which is protected under CCPA uh, in California, various other state and local uh, data privacy protections, and of course, the big one, which is GDPR. So we need to make sure that all of that data that we're using for this AI analysis and to make your life uh, easy is also still obeying the rules and the security posture that you need to protect your network, to protect your environment, and of course, protect the data and the things that can cost you money, like PII disclosures. So how do we do this with Extreme Cloud IQ and how does Extreme tackle this? Well, the idea is, again, that universal concept is that we have universal points of presence throughout varying cloud providers. We use Amazon, we use Azure, we use Google GCP. We offer our cloud solution as both a public cloud, which has a huge footprint of 21 worldwide pops. We can also do private cloud implementation. So if you're a large uh, organization where you need to have guaranteed data privacy, you have maybe a large financial firm or a bank that says, I cannot have any multi-tenancy, but I want to take advantage of the benefits of public cloud, the elasticity, the scale, and I want to have Extreme run it for me so that I can have all of these things with, with the power of Extreme Cloud IQ. We can actually build private instances within our infrastructure that are dedicated to a single customer and then manage it for them so that they can have that flexibility. We also offer the flexibility of local cloud and a hybridized cloud where you can use public cloud coupled with devices on premises to give you the best of both worlds or solely local cloud if you're in an environment that needs to be air gapped or have no communication with the cloud whatsoever. The benefits of this give you that distributed intelligence and because we are a cloud uh, organization and Extreme has some really high-end uh, operations talent, we're running at five nines uptime and beyond on our, our global public cloud uh, just because the way we have it engineered. And that's what you need as a business that operates in every time zone, that operates uh, throughout the countries and world, is you need to be able to have it available when you need it. Unified is where we come into play with our AI ops solutions, where Extreme Cloud IQ with our co-pilot offerings, which allow you to have that AI intelligence, machine learning, to understand what's going on in the environment across all of the data that we ingest, uh, and being able to give it to you in an explainable format. If we just tell you something happened uh, or we're seeing a trend, that may not mean anything to a young engineer. What we want to be able to do is explain it to you, have you understand what this error means, why we're seeing it, how we came about that conclusion, and what you can do to fix it, more importantly. Digital twinning is something that we've recently announced where you can build model environments within our cloud, take an access point, the actual software on an access point or switch, mimic it in the cloud and interact with that device with real-time CLI, essentially building a model network and a digital twin of even an operating device to allow you to test and QA and essentially experiment in a cloud environment and give you the ability to make mistakes without costing your organization anything while you try to work out solutions and problems. All of this bundled into insights with analytics and location and guest 
And Air Defense, which is our world leading uh, solution for uh, WIPs and, and intrusion prevention. And then all of that bundled into a solution that is a microservices based architecture. It's distributed throughout three different cloud providers and secured with ISO 27001, 27017, 27701, a SOC 2, CSA Star 1, and now we are also adding at Extreme, we are building a federal certified version of the product that is FedRAMP medium uh, certified so we can be into organizations like the Department of Energy, DOD, and other areas as well. So if we look at briefly the architecture of this, as I mentioned before, we have 21 sites throughout the world that hold this data. And the benefit to a customer of this is instantaneous GDPR and data sovereignty uh, compliance. Because when you entrust your data to us, we put it in one location that you choose. So let's say you wanna have your data in Frankfurt because Germany has some of the most stringent data privacy laws that exist. You can be guaranteed that all of your network data is stored in Frankfurt. We don't move it around in the cloud. It's 100% sovereign to that particular geography. In the US, it's also redundant between uh, East and West and Amazon and Google. And we have different ways that we can fail over between different sites and host your data uh, with different levels of data retention. We do offer unlimited data retention, which means as long as you are a customer, we will hold your data. So the benefit of this is that the, you know, if you're familiar with AI and ML, the bigger pool you have to train that data on, the more intelligent it gets. So if you have two, three years of data because you've been a customer for that long, we can start analyzing and seeing trends over that time and give you alerts and more, more accurate intelligence based on those bigger data pools. However, if you are sensitive about retention and have things like FOIA issues, things like that, we can retain, retain that data for only 90 days as well, depending on where in the world you'd like to store it. Our architecture with Extreme Cloud IQ, and this is a fairly high level diagram, but just to, to, to outline the fact that this is not an application that is just simply running in the cloud that's a glorified VMware application. This is a high level um, mul multiple container individual microservice application that is horizontally and vertically scalable to the nth degree. Currently within Extreme right now, we process well over 10 billion network events per day with this cloud. We have in excess of 12 petabytes of data uh, real time online right now with the cloud and we're managing approximately 1.7 million devices um, for customers. And that's a combination of routers, switches and access points, all communicating data to the cloud. And then their instances are private to that customer so that we can uh, get all of this AI and ML and configuration orchestration and management. Uh, so it is a, a, a application that is designed to scale. It's designed to grow no matter what you want to throw at it. We have customers that have 50 devices managed with us and some large customers that have in excess of 20,000 devices managed in one single instance. It's built up a series of database subsystems, messaging brokers, forward uh, web listeners and proxies. And the one thing I want to highlight is the fact that you have this public network and a private network, meaning that all of the data, all of the stuff that you hold dear is protected in a private network that has absolutely zero access to the internet. The only thing that can talk to, to that backend service set is a set of proxy based web listeners that are then uh, isolated off with firewalls and load balancers and a variety of different hardware that keep it answering the front end requests and then going against the back end through privatized communications. So again, another extra layer protection and application designed and built to manage and scale uh, the network. And these are the kinds of things you need to look at no matter what kind of cloud architecture you're trying to solve. If you're just doing a logging solution, if you're trying to buy a solution for anything for that matter, you need to take a look at in your purchasing how does that application actually work? You, you, don't, you want to avoid the applications that are simply VMware-based things that there are multiple instances in a cloud. A true cloud architecture has the ability to survive you know, a service failure. It has the ability to survive a database failure because it's distributed and individually serviced at a microservices level, which gives you high levels of reliability, high levels of scalability, and it may be out of your realm to manage it, but that's why you pay companies and invest in companies like Extreme to, to handle this level of stuff for you so that all you're having to deal with is running the application and managing your network. So if we look at how we log in with Extreme Cloud IQ, and I'll just cover this very briefly, 
is you sign into what we call our global data center. It then, based on that 21 tiers of, of different uh, worldwide presences that we have, will look up your account, automatically redirect you to which regional data center your, your account belongs to, and then automatically connect you with your virtual environment or what we call a VIQ, which is where your data lives. So you're logging into the central login on a, an authentication source, which can support things like SAML2 and connecting and then get re getting redirected to wherever in the world your data belongs. As I mentioned before, we have the ISO certifications on our product as well. And this is something you should look for across any application that you're storing data within the cloud is ISO implements a series of security standards. And in the case of ISO 27001, it's an information security management system or an ISMS. This is dedicated controls around everything from how you handle HR to whether or not you are shredding data that is in physical format. Yes, that's actually a requirement uh, to how you handle everything from data retention and data privacy. 27,017 is a, effectively a bolt-on to 27,001, which gives you additional controls specific for cloud-type applications. And then 27,701 is what's known as a Privacy Information Management System, or a PIMS, which is a newer standard within ISO, but governs all of the things around being ISO compliant and making sure that data stays exactly where it is and that it is not subject to uh, mishandling, especially around PII. So let's talk very, very briefly about this idea of consumer expectations with the cloud. And if we look at something like Netflix, right, whether or not you're on your phone, your, your tablet or a television or a full size PC, it doesn't matter when you run network Netflix, you don't care where it is. You don't care how they built it. You don't care anything as long as it's just I want it to work right. You just you expect when you hit play that the movie goes. And this is exactly what we have done with Extreme Cloud IQ. No matter how you're accessing it, whether it's on-premises, local, whether or not it's hosted in our cloud or yours, you're able to access the data and experience the same application the same way each and every time with consistency and reliability. And you don't have to ever question it. So if we look at the ways in which we can deploy, which is an industry leading way of which we can do this uh, amongst all of our competitors in this space, is we'll start with our public cloud, giving you the ability to have the presence that you want in either Azure, AWS, or Google. So if you are, let's say, a retailer, in which case AWS might be an evil four-letter word for you and you don't want to see a single dime of your money going to fund Amazon. And we see this all the time. Well, that's fine because we have regional data centers that will host your data in Azure, for instance, so that you don't have to see any of your money funding, you know, funding Amazon for any reason. And again, we manage it so that your hands off, you're just using the application. We can assure you that your data is stored, let's say, in an Iowa instance of Azure and end of story and giving you that ability of having to be able to use Extreme Cloud IQ. With our local and public hybridized version, you can have uh, the same concept of partial cloud and then using something like Extreme Cloud IQ controller, which is our legacy controller-based wireless, or something like Extreme Cloud IQ Site Engine, which is a, uh, another on-premises management solution that can be hybridized into the cloud, sending data into the cloud and giving you central insight. And you can mix and match. So you can take our cloud-only access points as well as the uh, Extreme Cloud IQ uh, controller, which can manage the controller-based access points and combine all of that configuration, all of that network monitoring, all of the AI capability into one pane of glass, one application to view your switching and your routing, no matter how you have it. So if you're a, a government environment that had, you know, for certain areas, you can have cloud solutions. And then for other more secretive areas, you need to have that air-gapped or at least partially air-gapped on-premises uh, deployment, you can do both. And it doesn't matter how you decide to deploy. You're not gonna lose any functionality. And in fact, you'll gain the ability of having it however you want. With private cloud, as I mentioned before, we can build an instance dedicated for you. So it's exactly like public cloud, except the fact that it's 100% reserved for you and not multi-tenanted. So you're guaranteed that that entire infrastructure that's been built can vertically and horizontally scale, has all of the same public cloud reliability, all of the same ISO certifications, and everything about it is 100% secured, but reserved for you. 
And then with local, again, going back to the Cloud IQ controller, you don't have to use cloud at all. You can leverage our site engine product and our Cloud IQ uh, on-premises controller uh, environment without any connection to the cloud whatsoever and simply air gap it out so that you can build the best of your best of both worlds, if you will, and choose at a later date to link it to the cloud. There's nothing in these four options that says you can't move from one to the other, back and forth, or combine them in intelligent ways that work for your business, which gives you that flexibility of control and gives you centralized insight of all of your environment. With Extreme Cloud IQ public deployments, as we mentioned before, you have all of that data protection, reliability of five nines plus uptime, continuous delivery and continuous development. So this is one huge benefit of the public cloud in that just like Facebook or Instagram or any of these other tools, Twitter, that you may see where one day you log in and poof, there's a new feature or a new way of doing things. We can do the exact same thing with Cloud IQ. We don't need to do dedicated downtimes. We can patch individual elements and and work towards giving you new features, new delivery capability uh, overnight and, and fix even bugs if there's an issue overnight if we need to. So you get with public cloud the most current leading bleeding edge capabilities um, without doing any effort at all and not having to do your own upgrades. Uh, and then the operational savings of not having to deal with it other than just simply paying your subscription to us and you get all of the features of the product. With the local deployments, you get, again, all of those features of Cloud IQ, uh, the, the, the instantaneous updates, et cetera, but you are then needing to keep uh, the site engine or the controller piece on your premises, and you can manage in between or combine them into one centralized window and manage across different platforms. And then with Extreme Cloud IQ's private deployment, as we mentioned, this is a 100% dedicated environment. This does require commitment, and we don't do this for everybody. If you're only going to do 100 devices, you're probably not going to get us to spin up a private cloud for you. But if you're talking about a couple of thousand devices and some, some reasonable size to it, um, you know, some of our, our customers have three to five to 10,000 devices, up to 20,000 devices on some private cloud deployments, then we will build that environment for you, and we can have 100% dedicated IP addresses, firewall locked down to your private IP ranges, um, branding if you need to, um, however you'd like to do it, we can basically build that environment. Um, and we can turn these environments up once the contracts are signed, as everybody's agreed on how this is going to get built. We can actually turn up an entire private instance in under four hours. So there you have it. That's Extreme Cloud IQ in a nutshell. One network, one cloud, everything combined together with a, with a true cloud environment. And this is what we specialize in at Extreme. And, and I encourage you, uh, reach out to me on LinkedIn, reach out to um, uh, me, however you'd like. And I'll be happy to connect you with any of our personnel and marketing or sales if you're interested in further information. And I'm happy to answer any questions at all that you might have about the architecture or certainly around the security side of things um, anytime you'd, you'd like. So thanks, Ron. And uh, Excellent.